common sense is in Canberra right now. Sure, it's not in the majority in the Senate or the House, but it certainly is on this show. No sooks, no lefties. The wonderful Pauline Hanson and the equally delightful Barnaby Joyce, both here. Lovely to see you. Geez, you both look like you had a good weekend. Um, now, what about this? Uh, as you know, a lot of analysis of the smarty pants people from the yes bubble, well, of course, they say that the great Australian public that went from 60-40 yes to 60-40 no apparently got dumber in the past uh, year or so, not smarter about the idea being put on the table. Roll the tape of some of the analysis of why Australia voted the way it did. In those inner, wealthier, educated electorates. We're seeing the yes vote hold up quite well. Areas with higher levels of education more likely to vote in favour of the voice. Streets versus the elite. Those wealthier, more educated suburbs are more likely to vote yes. All those dummies, Pauline. Apparently 60% of the country. <laughs> Aren't they a bunch of sooks, as you so say? They are a bunch of sooks. Um, Paul, let me just tell people. OK, we've had 45 um, referendums since uh, Federation 1901. Eight of them have succeeded. So what are they saying? The people rejected the other, you know, um, uh, from that, they're all dumb. Yep. So, you know... We've got dumber as the years have rolled up. We were dumb in 1901, yes, I know. dumb in we've, 1923. We've got more educated people these days. Yeah, it dumb in 1988. That's... Yeah, that's their excuse with all this, Paul, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. But so even, anyway. even that, like on this one, Paul and listeners, there's only 12... I'll give you another thing. There's only been 12 referendums where they've lost both a majority and every, sta every, sta every state and one territory. And th this was one of them. This was one of them. Yeah. It was a hubristic, divisive debacle. It was an absolute debacle. And I just want to take you through something. Let's go through this. Remember at the start, remember Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq? <laughs> they started the referendum with an African-American basketball yeah. player who yeah. advertises for betting agencies. Yeah. And then they... It started badly. And then they went to uh, Coles and Woolworths and the banks supporting them. In a cost-of-living crisis, who do you think people are really, you know, affectionate about? Mm. I'll tell you what, it ain't Coles and Woolworths and the banks. And so it tailed away a little bit in the middle. And in the end, of course, they had the absolute train wreck, which was the vote. So as Blackadder said, it started badly, tailed away a little bit in the middle, and the less said about the end of it, the better. Yeah, no, I mean... Australians were very smart here, Paul, and the whole fact is, you know who let them down? Marsha Langton, Noel Pearson, Megan Davis, Lyndon Burney, and, um, you know, Thomas Mayo... So, and Megan Davis. So they're the ones, they're the ones who actually tried to hoodwink the Australian people. They weren't dumb because they woke up to their lies and that's why we got the vote that we did. So good on Australia. You, you knew what the hell was happening. They were trying to, to hoodwink you. Also, per perfect example, right? Again, you know, last week the symbolism of the Prime Minister crying in the dirt of Uluru. Um, but the reality was when he was confronted today in the Senate by Jacinta Price, who clearly, definitively, absolutely won the debate about where the country should be, who never hid the types of practical solutions that she wanted. The first chance they got to spit in her face and say, no, and you're going to be punished forever because you denied the first line of, Alba, of, of Albo's bio in the great history and pantheon of Labor leaders. What about what happened in the Senate today, Pauline, where they just crushed... Do not pass go, do not get $200. Not the legislation to set up a Royal Commission, but a request to set up a Royal Commission. What arrogance from these people who were crying in the dirt a week ago. Paul, they have no interest in really um, digging into the problems that we have. They outlined all the problems that is happening and they thought the voice, we need the voice of Parliament to tell us what was happening. The fact is that went down 26 to 31 votes. David... Um, Pocock was part of that vote. I don't know where Jackie Lambie was and Tammy Tyrrell. They weren't in the chamber at the time, but they could have been paired with the Labor Party. The fact is that, you know, I've been calling for audits. I've put up... I've actually named people and organisations where corruption is happening. They refuse to take, allow me to table the documents. Jacinda Price is spot on the money here, which I've been calling for the last 27 years for audits mm. to be done. If you do that, you're a racist. They don't want to find the answers. 
Tell you, the people, I tell you what's happened, Paul. This referendum has woken up the Australian people. They are now asking the questions about where has the money gone, and they have every right to ask where it's estimated about $40 billion a year has gone onto this Aboriginal industry gravy train, and we need to actually find the answers. They are too gutless to do it because, and the Greens. So if you keep voting for Labor and the Greens, this is what you keep going. You're not going to get accountability for your tax dollars. They'll keep shutting the doors in your face. You will not know. They're propping up this, these moderates, these ones, purely for the vote. And their socialist, communist views on this, on our country and our democracy, you won't get a look in. But, but Pauline, also, tell me what you really think. No, no that's why we <laughs> love her, right? When she's on here, she, 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 lets, she lets the restrictor play her off and it's all, it's all Pauline. We love it, just as we do with you. 